Hi, I'm uh, Nick Fletcher and I'm here today just to talk to you a bit about my new album called Cycles of Behaviour, uh, which I'm really, really excited about. We've just finished recording and uh, we're hoping to get it released in uh, the spring of next year. It's all come together really, really well, although as you can imagine during the lockdown and the problems we've had this year, it's been quite an arduous task to put together, but we're really pleased with the results and uh, I'm sure that you're going to really enjoy it. I'm certainly enjoying the process and uh, I think there's some really interesting music um, on the album. Okay, so the band uh, was put together um, with uh, various fantastic musicians from the progressive rock scene, um, mainly uh, initially with John Hackett, my old friend and uh, writing partner, uh, who's also contributed some, uh, some lovely writing to the album. Um, and also I um, got my friend Tim Harries to play bass, who was a remarkable bass player, who's played in so many different uh, settings, and particularly he'd be remembered for his work with Bill Bruford and the band Earthworks, um, and of course uh, Dave Bainbridge, uh, most people know Dave, he's a wonderful uh, guitarist, keyboard player, orchestrator, writer and everything, and his band Iota and Celestial Fire, and then he came on board to play some, some Hammond organ for us and uh, contributed some remarkable stuff. And also we've got Russ Wilson, who's a fantastic drummer. Well, many people will know from his work with the book of Genesis and uh, Genesis uh, Visible Touch, two of the really sort of uh, preeminent Genesis tribute bands in the UK. So he's a, a man of varied talent and a wonderful player. And he's contributed some great stuff for his album, which I'm sure you'll be excited to, to hear. So the album initially was um, uh, worked on by myself and my friend John Hackett. John was very helpful in um, getting the recording, the initial recording together with me because um, I couldn't have done it on my own. So John did a really good job in, in, in that as well as contributing some songwriting and some wonderful uh, singing and flute playing to the album. Um, but then um, we needed to take it to the next level with things and get other musicians to play on it and obviously to mix it and to master the album. And uh, I immediately thought of my old friend Caroline Bonnet from SCM Media, who I thought would be a fantastic choice because not only is she a great um, um, skillful sound engineer and producer, but also uh, a, a wonderful keyboard player and arranger and also uh, a fantastic vocalist. And we needed some backing vocals and Caroline was the perfect choice to supply some of those as well. Um, so it worked out really, really well and um, I'm so excited to, uh, to have Caroline on board um, because she contributes such a lot to the album sonically, but also in some of the keyboards that she's added as well and her uh, lovely backing vocals. And that's uh, um, a really great addition to the, uh, to the lineup of the band. So the album comprises of eight compositions. Uh, four instrumentals and four songs. Um, the reason for, for that really is because um, I don't uh, consider myself a, a songwriter as such. I tend to write in um, more extended forms. Um, but obviously working with someone like John Hackett, who's a very skillful and uh, experienced songwriter, uh, who writes uh, not only some very nice melodic ideas, but also um, is very good with words. So John came on board and he contributed some lyrics to the tracks where we thought lyrics would be helpful and also you know some melodic ideas in places. So that's why we ended up with more of a balance between instrumental and uh, uh, vocal tracks. On my previous album that I did with John called Beyond the Stars, um, that was pretty much all vocal tracks with just one instrumental that I did using acoustic guitars. Um, but with this one it felt like um, you know, I wanted to uh, venture out into more instrumental forms as well because obviously it allowed me more space to express myself on the guitar uh, in a way that you can't as much with some of the vocal tunes. Um, so that's basically what happened there and that's how it came about. Well my background is very varied, it comes from uh, you know, rock music and uh, classical music and I also dabbled a bit in jazz and folk music as well. So my professional career as a session player has encompassed all sorts of music, and very varied really. Um, so all those kind of influences come into my writing and into my playing. Um, so there's some uh, classical um, influences, especially in the sort of harmonic concepts and the forms that I come up with. Um, rhythmically there are some ideas from jazz fusion, 
and uh, musically with the guitar, uh, electric guitar, um, my bedrock for playing is blues. Um, but um, the jazz thing creeps in well, and uh, obviously it's very well grounded in, in rock, really. So the music is very progressive because it encompasses so many different influences and so many stylistic twists and turns. But um, progressive rock music, I suppose, is the, definitely the genre we would call it. So the connection with John Hackett um, right. happened about 11 years ago. Um, I was giving a solo uh, concert because I've uh, done a lot of solo classical work as well as playing uh, rock music. And John was actually a member of the audience at the concert I gave. And I didn't know John was there and I didn't even know who he was. Um, but he introduced himself at the end of the concert, told me how much he enjoyed it and appreciated the playing and the music. And then we just got chatting, chatting, and he just said to me that, you know, oh, my name's John Hackett, if you ever fancy doing some duets any time, I'm a flautist now. And the name rang a bell, I thought, John Hackett? Crack it, that must be, is that Steve Hackett's brother? And, uh, and of course, it turned out that it was Steve's brother. And Steve was a great formative influence on my early years of playing. So it was uh, fantastic to, to meet John. And um, you know, we had lots to talk about. We had lots in common musically, both from classical and rock music. So the album title, Cycles of Behaviour, um, it took a while to come up with a title because we had lots of different working titles. Um, but ultimately I felt that Cycles of Behaviour was a good title because it was obviously takes its name from one of the tracks on the album, uh, which is an instrumental. Um, but the whole album itself is not a concept album, but it is a, an album which explores themes which are quite current today in that state of the world. And uh, Cycles of Behaviour and kind of sums up where human beings are, I think, at the moment, in terms of what's happening in the world and uh, how things come round. We found ourselves in a terrible mess in the 20th century and we now you know, seem to be finding ourselves in a terrible mess in the 21st century. Um, so history seems to be repeating itself. Um, human beings, and both on a personal level and you know, in an international level, we seem to never learn from some mistakes that we've made. And um, also a track called Interconnected, which is about the interconnectedness uh, of the planet and how we sort of all interconnect with each other, you know, the, the, the pitfalls and that, that create as well as the benefits. Um, and there's also a track, um, the final track in the album, it's called Philosopher King. And uh, I wrote that piece and John wrote some lyrics to it and added a bit of melodic content to it as well. But I said to John that I felt like it needed a big theme because it's a big song, it's a very long piece of music. So John came up with this idea of the Philosopher King, which is a quote from either Plato or Socrates or some Greek philosopher. And uh, it sort of it captures the sort of idea that what the world really needs is leadership that has wisdom and not just people who are just wanting to run things for the sake of it and having power. That in order to wield power, there needs to be wisdom. So the idea that a, that a king or someone in, in the position of power needs to be, uh, have wisdom uh, as well in order to you know, wield that power is really, really important, particularly at the time now when you know, the world is kind of led by a few people who don't seem to have quite as much wisdom as they could do. Guitar influences is an interesting question because um, growing up in the 70s, we, I was spoiled for choice learning to play the guitar. Which to, who to listen to because obviously in the 70s we had such a massive range of wonderful guitar players who were really expanding the horizons of the instrument and doing some great things. Um, so my early influences were sort of going back to people like um, Jim Page and Jeff Beck and those kind of guys, uh, David Gilmore and um, obviously some more lesser known people um, but obviously people like um, Steve Hackett as well was a big influence because I got into playing the classical guitar Probably as a direct result of hearing Steve playing the Genesis and using that instrument uh, as a young teenager kind of got me interested in it. So that was a big influence as well. So of course meeting John and meeting Steve many times since has been, has been fantastic. You have to discuss that with Steve and tell him how much he, you know, he's uh, playing his influence. So um, I've obviously learned a lot from a lot of other players as well since then. But my primary influences in the, in the rock world are the, the people I've just mentioned really. So as well as hearing some really interesting music and uh, some interesting songs, um, what you get on this album is some fantastic musicianship for some really uh, wonderful players. And um, so this is uh, Cycles of Behaviour.